Alright, hello Bio2, this is Mr. B, and we are going to start a new chapter today. It's uh, chapter 18 in our books, and it's titled Finding Order and Diversity, and another word is just classification. It's going to be how we classify animals. You see, you got three pictures here. We got a warthog, praying mantis, and a peacock down there. So we're going to figure out how we're going to group these things, why they're grouped the way they are, things like that. So. Starting off, uh, biologists have identified and named about 1.5 million organisms so far, and they estimate that 2 to 100 million additional organisms have yet to be discovered. So, how are we going to classify all of these huge amounts of creatures? So, one way that maybe you might think to do is just by giving it a common name. So, just calling it a bear, calling it a warthog, or calling it just a peacock. Um, However, that does not work because common names of organisms vary just based off what regions you live in and things like that. And scientists cannot use them as an effective means of classification. So giving things a common name of just like, like I said, like a warthog, a praying mantis, or a peacock, that doesn't work. We have different languages all over the world. And just even within different regions of our country, people call the same animal different things. So we're not going to use a common name to classify organisms. So how are living things classified or organized to study? And so biologists use a classification classification system to name organisms and group them in a logical manner. So the most effective logical manner that they came up with was a system that is known as binomial nomenclature. Now, I know that sounds like a mouthful and it sounds confusing, but honestly, it's not that bad. So when we break down binomial nomenclature, it was founded by the name of Carlos Linnaeus. And when we break down the words, it's pretty simple. So as you guys know, the word bi, like a bicycle, means two. No meal kind of almost kind of has the same sounding as name. So two name and then nomenclature would be naming system. So this system that Linnaeus came up with is just means two name naming system. So don't get freaked out when you see binomial nomenclature because it's really not that big of a deal. And there are some rules that he kind of came up with is he had to use the Latin language for the names. And um, Latin is a very effective way <clears throat> to name things because it is a dead language. It's a language that no one speaks anymore and therefore it doesn't change. So when we think of the English language today, words like OMG and IDK have made their way into our everyday vernacular. So um, <clears throat> English wouldn't be really an effective language to use because in a hundred years English probably won't sound anything like it does today. However, Latin will always be the same because no one speaks it anymore therefore it'll never change. And then another rule is whenever we write this, scientific name would be italicized. And if you're writing it out yourself, it's kind of hard to write in italics, so you would underline that. So Carlos Linnaeus came up with this system, and <clears throat> and again, just two name naming system is kind of just what it means. So when we talk about the scientific name, which is his the part of his two name naming system. Um, the first part of the name is the genus to which the organism belongs and we talked about genus in our introduction activity and it's just a group of closely related species so when you write that down you're going to capitalize it so when we're writing the genus is always capitalized then the second part of the name which is unique to each species within the genus and this part of the name often describes an important trait or where the organism lives and this is known as the specific epithet and it is always going to be lowercase so the specific epithet and uh, usually you might see people call this the species name however the second name is not known as the species it's when we put those two names together that is what's going to give us the species so the genus plus a specific epithet is going to equal the species and then so that is how we name them binomial nomenclature two name naming system invented by Carolus Linnaeus it's always Latin names and the names are always italicized the first one is always capitalized, second one is always lowercase. So we will again we'll review that, but just keep that in mind. So moving on, uh, Linnaeus did not only name species, he also grouped them into categories. We discussed these categories in class, and here they are again. So we are going to start this time from smallest to largest, the species, then genus, then family, then order, then class, then phylum, then kingdom. <clears throat> So that is how we're going to group our organisms. So um, each uh, level is called a taxon or taxonomic category. And the term taxon is just a general term that can be applied to any level of classification. So for example, if we're talking about the kingdom animalia, we can call that level a taxon. If we're talking about a certain order, 
we can just call that a taxon. So a taxon is a general term that can apply to any level that we're talking about as terms of classification. So, um, okay, it looks like I might have lost a couple uh, slides here. So the first two, as we remember, are genus and species, and these are the most two, are the two most specific. So we're going to start then. The next one above that is a family, and then a genre is just again the plural term for a genus. And so when they uh, share many characteristics, they're grouped into a larger category called the family, and then. The next broader category above the family is the order. As you can see, we kind of have three bears and then a fox is kind of added in there for the carnivora because they all are, are carnivores. I, that's actually an incorrect picture because panda bears only eat bamboo. I don't think they actually eat meat. So there's a little incorrect information for you there. And then above that, we go up to class. And then we go to phylum. And then we go to kingdom being our largest group. So going backwards, go kingdom phylum, class, order, family, and then somehow I lost those two, then genus, species. So that is how Linnaeus, again, he also he came up with the naming system and he also came up with these six levels for identification. And then here is just a look at how it gets more specific as you go down. So the similarities kind of drop off <clears throat> at each level and it gets more specific. So that is the lesson on Classification, let me know if you have any questions.